Okay, so here is the bike that I'm going to be using today. And um, I'm going to be going to Sauston to see a friend of mine. And then also uh, to test the new camera and the sound as well. We'll see how that's gonna work. Hopefully good, but you never know. So testing is the primary thing. Okay, so here we have um, a different bike today to ride, uh, one that you haven't seen before. <coughs> um, there's a lot of wind today, which, uh, which is going to put the microphones through a good test. Uh, if you don't hear any wind uh, noise, that would be great. And we're gonna take the small road for that. Or maybe, maybe I should go uh, and take some faster roads. No, I'm gonna take the, um, uh, the small roads. Uh, there shouldn't be quite a lot of traffic at this time of the day, so. So that should be fine. Unfortunately, couldn't overtake it here. That's a Porsche in front of me, by the way. And it feels like they're afraid to drive it. Yeah, maybe some uh, old lady with a lot of money. Someone told her, buy a Porsche. <laughs> and then she did. But then they didn't tell her that she has to drive it, otherwise it looks ridiculous. Yeah, I hope we get to a place with more visibility so I can go around it. This bike, um, I bought it because um, of comfort. Yeah, uh, it, it is. It is a great, great bike. Yeah, and I used to have the previous model as well from 2018. Um, I had to. I had to sell that one because uh, I did 50,000 miles on it. So in 2020. I actually uh, traded it in for the Kawasaki and, um, and then I only had the Kawasaki for a while but then um, I needed a different bike for teaching so after that I got a Triumph uh, 900 Rally Pro 
yeah the, uh, the 900 rally pro great bike i still dream about it but unfortunately when i'm working i ride all day and by the end of the day my uh, my ass is a pancake uh, the seat was so uncomfortable and um, the roads in Cambridge here are very bumpy and potholy, so uh, you need you need a very well suspension uh, bike and a nice comfortable seat as well. So what I did then, I went to Triumph, I traded in the 900 and I got the 1200 instead. Um, my opinion is that the 1200 is not as good i mean feeling wise the, um, ev everything is good i mean it's uh, marginal but uh, the 900 feels a lot more uh, athletic and it, um, it's very light on its feet as well well this one is a bit heavy it's more like a lazy bike uh, and uh, this one has more weather protection and the seat is much more comfortable. It's got um, uh, that electronic suspension that um, everyone's raving about. Uh, I personally don't like electronic suspension because uh, you can't really adjust it and um, it's always a bit too hard for me. Uh, but then I just put it in rain mode and uh, that will go as soft as possible. So, so that's not a, a big problem. Uh, the suspension on the 900 Rally Pro was uh, way better. I mean, it was uh, manual adjustment and all this, but um, it was good. And then, uh, this bike, I um, more often than not, I take the key to another bike, even though this is... Uh, this is packed with electronics and rider rates and all the heated grips and heated seat and everything the blind spot detection the radar on the back um, it's just there's no fun about it if i can put it that way yeah most of the time if it's not raining i would probably take the scooter uh, rather than uh, this bike It's nice to ride, but it's like, poof. anyway, it is a good bike, um, I'm loving it. But then when I was buying the Honda XADV, I was like, I don't need any more bikes, so I'm going to get the Honda and then trade this bike in. Unfortunately, at the time it was six months old and nobody wanted to give me the money that I needed to pay it off. Um, the amount at the time was about 17,000, just over 17. So basically, uh, I decided to keep it because the most they would give me was um, 11 and a half thousand. I wasn't happy with that. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep it. And uh, basically I ride it until it dies or whatever. Uh, it doesn't die. It's got a 30 liters tank. It never runs, runs out of petrol. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I don't have any more space for more bikes. And uh, yeah, it is a nice bike uh, for this kind of weather, like uh, coldish, windy and all this. Um, it makes you big on the road. Um, most of the time I ride without the panniers and the top box, but today I decided to take them. Just so I can uh, put some of my gear inside. And, uh, yeah. It is powerful enough. Uh, you never actually use the power on the road, because uh, by the time you get to the power band, you've broken all the all the speed limits.
uh, one thing that this bike is very good for uh, this is um, overtaking in terms of I sit so high I can see everything up ahead when I'm riding my Kawasaki uh, obviously it's a lot faster and more powerful but because I'm sitting so low I can't really see what's ahead and most of the time I wouldn't go for an overtake just because of that while on this I can see above the cars all the way above that lorry in front as well yeah so today I have uh, nothing to do day off and um, decided to go and um, and test the camera uh, I watched a few videos on YouTube how to set up the camera with the microphones it's all DJI uh, new camera is DJI uh, Osmo Action 4 and um, funny enough I had the DJI microphones the, the two microphones with the receiver uh, the, uh, those uh, the wireless ones uh, it turned out this camera because it's newer uh, will uh, automatically connect uh, to the microphone too but I don't have it and it's quite expensive so I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out how to uh, how to fix that and uh, there are a few videos you can see it on the, on the mirror there maybe uh, how the, the the camera with the with the receiver uh, connected I put um, a rubber band around it so it doesn't fall off or something and uh, one of the microphones is inside my helmet the other one is in my map pocket uh, of the jacket so it should be hearing that um, exhaust noise very nicely yeah it was nice to drive at 60 miles an hour until we got those lorries in front let's see the range is 161 that's good the other day it was very very cold I think it was minus minus 6 or so and I had to pump up the um, tires and nowadays I'm pretty sure uh, they over inflated they are over inflated in fact 3.4 and 2.6 uh, bars that's supposed to be 2.9 and 2.2 yeah I might have to go to to the school to adjust to adjust those pressures because um, that's not cool at all I know they're not gonna blow up or anything but still it shouldn't be like this fuel status and just turn it off sometimes I like to see what's um, uh, what's my fuel consumption like momentary fuel consumption and um, for the whole trip and stuff like this it's just things that I guess everyone likes those to just uh, watch things happening on uh, on the screen you got a big screen I don't like it a lot because uh, um, it's a bit it's a bit slow uh, on the first Tiger that I've got and that was no uh, it wasn't the first bike that I had with a screen the Street Triple RS was the first one with a screen that I had and um, it was exactly the same on the Triumph uh, Tiger 1200 in 2018 and that thing was quick uh, then on the 900 it was still very quick I um, mean very responsive uh, screen and this one is a pain in the ass I mean um, uh, you you click a button and you wait for like half a second for something to happen and it's very annoying yeah it's like a, it's like an old phone uh, that uh, doesn't get 
updates anymore. Even though that bike was uh, recently updated because uh, it was giving me uh, that um, that fault uh, every time. I, well, it wasn't every time, but intermittently. Every um, oh, every time I started intermittently, uh, it would show that the battery um, is um, there's something wrong with it, a battery fault. But then uh, it never actually had a problem starting. Uh, so I took it to Triumph. They updated it. They updated it, and then um, uh, it stopped doing it. Yeah, so much traffic, it's not worth overtaking, I mean, trying to overtake at all. Um, that's why I don't need uh, such a powerful bike. I mean, it's nice to have a powerful bike. It's, um, you got the bragging rights and everything, uh, but let's be honest. Doing 30 and 40 miles an hour uh, everywhere, it's uh, you don't need 150 horsepower. Yeah, you need about 20 to 30 horsepower. That's it. Maybe if um, if you want to overtake more, 50 horsepower, and you're going to be a lot more economical as well. This thing, if I ride it normally, uh, will do about 55 miles per gallon. Uh, but when I'm teaching, because um, it's a lot of stopping and going around town and uh, and so on, uh, it goes down to about 47. I think it's 47 at the moment. Yeah, 47 and a half. Uh, when, when I normally ride, I I try to be a bit smoother, so I don't accelerate hard or slow down hard I try to plan ahead and do everything um, a lot smoother and slower which works most of the time I mean if I manage to uh, to do 220 miles uh, on a tank with the Kawasaki then I can do over 350 miles on this tank it is very noisy on this bike as well. Um, the engine noise, it's um, not exactly a rattling, but something like this coming from the actual engine from from this area here, I guess. Uh, but it's worse on the BMW GS 1250. I, I did the test ride on the 1250 and that was uh, a, deal, a deal breaker. Um, I was going to buy it. It's a very comfortable bike, very nice to ride, but that noise, I just couldn't stand it. And uh, it was it was about 40 minutes ride uh, with stopping as well. So that's why I went for the Triumph again. Uh, th this one is still noisy, it's still noisy. And I like quiet bikes, something like the, uh, the Kawasaki ZZR. That thing almost silently goes through the wind, and it's um, even even if you open it up. Um, a few times while I was overtaking, uh, I would go up to the red line, and uh, that thing you don't even notice is there. I mean, there's there's no um, such a uh, bad, disgusting noise. This one is nice when you open it to overtake and it goes like, like that's what I like. But then the, the, the normal sound, it sounds like a tractor. Which in a way could be okay. I mean, sometimes sometimes I, I like, it depends on my mood. Yeah, sometimes I like the, the inline four, sometimes I like a one cylinder or two cylinders or three cylinders. Basically, I have four bikes and uh, they all have different number of cylinders and I don't know which one is my favorite. Maybe if someone puts a gun to my head uh, and say, hey, you have to get rid of all of your bikes but one, which one would you get? Which one would you, uh, would you save? I don't know. 
probably would be the Kawasaki ZZR because um, they don't make them anymore. Uh, at least um, they don't sell them in in Europe anymore since 2020. So uh, I can't buy another one unless second hand. But you know how people treat the bikes. I wouldn't get. Um, I mean, if I couldn't afford it, obviously I would get a second hand one. But uh, otherwise, it's better to get a new one and just take good care of it. Austin is still out on the road with that girl, maybe. Yes, yeah, so I'll just um, go over there to adjust my to adjust my uh, to adjust my tire pressures and. Uh, And then I'm gonna go to Solston. Okay, so let's see if the tires will show correctly. Uh, now, see, it takes ages to boot up. It's like, oh, come on, mate. I just robbed the bank and I need to go. Okay, and that thing is flushing for no good reason at all. Now for those who are wondering and maybe don't know, there's a feature here, if you press this button for about a second, you will see an icon down here, which blinks while your, uh, your suspension is going down. And then it, it, it will stop blinking. Once you go over um, 54 miles an hour, I think it was, that will raise again. Okay, Austin is coming. So here we go. Oh, he's got a new helmet. I was just about to go. 